and welcome back to Cooking for Two 101. Today we're making a traditional-ish roasted turkey. I made a lot of turkeys a lot lately, but today I'm just doing a brine and then I'm going to roast it in a bag, keep it nice and juicy. In order to keep this video relatively short, I'm just going to tell you how to make the brine and then I'm going to do it later. Uh, when we come back though, I'll show you all the fun parts about what to do after the brine. But first I want to mention that um, you need to defrost your turkey before you try to cook it. It takes one day for every five pounds of frozen turkey. We have a 15 pound turkey, so it took me three days to defrost it. And just to be safe, I always do an extra day. So keep that in mind, five pounds per day. Okay, in this pan, I'm gonna add four cups of cold water. I'm going to add one cup of brown sugar, one and a quarter cup of pink Himalayan salt, four cloves of smashed garlic, two bay leaves, some palm full of peppercorn and a palm full of uh, dried rosemary. Put it all in there, bring it up to a boil, stir it about. As soon as the salt and the sugar have dissolved, I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna let it cool. Once it's relatively cool, I'm gonna put a layer of cold or of ice on the bottom of that big pan back there. I'm gonna pour the brine into it and add two cups of cold water. Once that stirs about a bit and the temperature of the brine comes down and is you can touch it and it doesn't feel warm at all then we're going to put the turkey in you want to put your turkey in breast side down if it isn't completely covered in brine you're going to add two more cups of cold water or enough water to cover the turkey then you're going to cover it with saran wrap you're going to put it in a refrigerator if it doesn't fit in your refrigerator you can put bags of ice on top of your turkey and let it brine for 12 to 16 18 hours when that's done we'll be back with the rest. Okay, welcome back. I have removed the turkey from the brine. I have patted it dry and I've let it sit here for about an hour just to come up to room temperature. It's way easier to cook a turkey that isn't refrigerator cold. So that's what's happening here. It's nice and dry. What we're gonna do first is fill the cavity. In case I forgot to mention it, which I did, stuff comes in there it's the neck and the gizzard and all the stuff take that out you can use that to make stock if you want to um, there may also be some in the back blah 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 we're not going to do that on this video what we are going to do though is stuff this cavity with a couple of mandarins which we are also going to put in our cranberry sauce you can see that video on our other turkey uh, that recipe on our other turkey video we're also putting in a half of an onion that i've diced up well not diced i guess i quartered it and one garlic clove. Let's get it all in there. This is going to flavor the inside of the meat. We are also going to put in two bay leaves and we're putting them in here because we're not going to eat anything that comes out of there but it is still going to flavor our turkey. I have um, a couple of sprigs of sage, a sprig of rosemary, and a few sprigs of thyme. Yeah, maybe a few too many. I'm just going to kind of squish these up and stick them in there. Uh, this is going to give our turkey that Thanksgiving smell, even though it's Christmas. <laughs> All right, we're done with this plate. Next, what we're going to do is uh, create the cooking vessel. And what I'm gonna do this time is put it in a turkey bag. If you haven't used a turkey bag, there's just one real secret, and that is don't skip the step where you put the flour in it. It's one tablespoon of flour in your bag. Uh, this keeps the turkey from sticking to the bag. Nobody wants to eat bag. They wanna eat turkey. All right, so the turkey, uh, the, the flour is in there. We're gonna add in two stalks of celery and the rest of the onion, so half an onion, a couple of cloves of garlic. And what this is gonna do is flavor the uh, juices that come out of the turkey and um, help us build a beautiful uh, gravy later. I'm also gonna add uh, a handful of peppercorns and some dried rosemary. Okay, now it's time to put this beauty in there. But first, we're gonna make a butter. And what we're going to do is uh, put the butter under the skin. It's going to keep the turkey uh, moist and then we're going to paint some um, olive oil on the skin to help it brown. So I have a few sprigs of thyme here. I have some room temperature butter. I'm going to pull all these leaves off of the thyme sprigs like that. And I'm just going to rip up this uh, uh, 
sage. Then mix it all about, and your hands are your best tools. Just go with it. Squish them together. Yum. And there we go. We're done. What you want to do is you want to just sort of put your hand in there and pull the skin away from the turkey. Try not to break the skin because then the butter will just leak out and that's no fun. And then you just take a scoop of butter, you stick it in there, and you smooth it backwards. You can see it sort of moving its way back. That's exactly what you want to see. All right, I'm going to finish this up and then we'll be right back to put the turkey in the bag. Okay, the magic butter is under the skin, and now we are going to paint the outside with some olive oil. And this will help it brown, but it will also help the salt and pepper that we're going to put on next stay on it. Uh, in the bag, as I mentioned, we have a, a tablespoon of flour, we have two stalks of celery, we have one half of an onion, kind of quartered, and some garlic. Uh, what that's going to do is keep our turkey up off of the bottom of the pan and flavor our uh, stock for when we make our gravy later. Okay, season your turkey from on high. This is a very big bird, but you don't want it to all land in the same spot, so up high is better. That was some salt. We're going to go on with some pepper. Yum. My oven is set at 350 degrees. A turkey this size will probably take about a quarter, what, two and a quarter to two and a half hours. Uh, but you do want to use your thermometer and check the temperature. I think it's um, 165, and then you want to let it rest. The last thing we're going to do is stuck, tuck these wings uh, back under here so they're not flailing out and getting burnt while this baby's cooking. Oh, come on, don't fight me. There we go, like that. Okay, now it's going to go in the bag. Here's your new home, turkey. Hiya! All right, it's a big turkey. Let's pull this baby up, just like that. Make sure it's all in the pan, which it is. Then we're gonna tie it up at the top. It comes with a little zippy tie. If you don't have a zippy tie, you can cut some of the top off and just make a tie out of it. You, but you make sure you wanna use something that can go in the oven. You could use cooking uh, twine if you don't have one of these, but there it is, boom. Okay, the final step before we put this beauty in the oven is to cut a couple holes in the top so that it releases some of the steam and doesn't explode because <laughs> nobody needs an exploded turkey. All right, that's it. We're done here. We're going to put it in the oven. We're going to let it cook for a couple hours. We're going to check it out. Then we're going to let it rest for an hour. That's the most important part of making a juicy and delicious turkey letting it rest. All right, we'll be back when that's done. Okay, so it's been two and a half hours in the oven. Then I let it rest for about 45 minutes. I actually transferred it from the glass pan that it was in, because that's the pan that fits in my stove, and put it in this big roasting pan because you can't cook on stovetop with a glass pan, but you can with one of these. So I'm gonna take all of this um, plastic and rip it open. Look at my beautiful bird. And I didn't do anything to brown it. It browned just like this in the bag by itself. What I'm gonna do though is let all these yummy juices out into this roasting pan and then I'm just gonna make gravy, which is super easy. A little slurry of cold water, cornstarch, mix it all together over medium high heat, let it come to boil, voila, gravy. That being said, look at my turkey, it's so pretty. I can't wait to have some. Okay, hope you enjoyed this uh, show about how to make a traditional turkey. Um, give it a try, it's not as daunting as it seems. It's actually very easy and you feel so accomplished when you're done. Thank you for uh, watching our video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and enjoy your turkey dinner.